Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and don't look now, but the Mets actually won a game last night. Yes, as difficult as it seems to believe, they did it, and they did it with the bullpen, which was the bigger surprise. So the Mets finished this road trip, uh, three wins, four losses, and considering how poorly it went, I, I think we really have to take a step back and consider the fact that the Mets very easily could have won six of these games, if not all seven, had, had a couple of things broken their way. And I'm going to look at that as a positive and try to build on that as the Mets head back home to take, to take on some very difficult challengers. So before we start talking about the uh, four-game set that kicks off with the Cubs tonight, um, let's talk about last night's game, um, which, you know, it, this early in the season, it's tough to call something a, a must-win game, but with the way that things had been spiraling out of control, um, particularly in the bullpen, last night was a must-win game for the Mets, and they did just enough to do just that, to just win. Um, very, very clutch performance from Jason Vargas last night. Um, I think that none of us, <laughs> myself included, expected the, the, the kind of results that he ended up getting. Um, he pitched extremely well over five innings. And this is what I've sort of been saying all, all along. There, there are going to be some stinkers mixed in with Jason Vargas. I mean, he's not a power pitcher, and if his control is off, the, the results are what they have been, really, to start the season. When the control is on, as it was last night, as it was against the Marlins, uh, he's, a, he's a different pitcher, and he's a smart pitcher, and he moves the ball all around the zone and all around the plate. So uh, Jason Vargas is going to be fine, like I've been saying, and um, you know he stepped up huge last night. Um, they went from Vargas to Tim Peterson. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Tim Peterson. Yes, um, made made his major league debut last night in an extremely tight spot. It was a two to one lead, and uh, or sorry, a two nothing lead. He was protecting a two nothing lead. Um, Peterson was, and he pitched two innings, gave up one run on a home run to Johan Camargo, of course, um, which ironically was um, basically the same pitch in the same place <laughs> as it was the night before when he walked off against the Mets. Um, but um, Tim Peterson did yeoman's work out of the bullpen. I mean, as a rookie coming into that big spot, I think Keith called it. This kid was, was really poised. I mean, it didn't look like he was nervous. And you've got to imagine he was shaking in his boots. You know, he was super nervous to be in that kind of a spot in his major league debut. It must be nice to be able to sort of ease into a role as opposed to being just thrown into like a in blazing inferno, but that's where he was thrown, and he did pretty well, um, all things considered. Um, then Mickey Calloway made another move, and I, I will say one more thing about Vargas. Um, he only went five innings last night, and he threw something. He, I think he threw uh, fewer than seventy pitches, <laughs> um, and they and Mickey pulled him after five. And like when that when I first saw that happen, I'm like, oh god, this is going to be one of those moves that we're going to look at and be like, why the hell did you pull the starter? Uh, it didn't turn out to be the, the case, but then a few innings later, he did the same thing. So in the eighth inning, Mickey goes to Jerry's Familia to retire the, the really the three slash four best hitters in the Braves lineup. And um, Familia got by with a little help from his friends there. Um, Ahmed Rosario made a web gem play up the middle to rob Nick Markakis, the terrorist. Um, I'm sorry, he looks like a terrorist. Uh, Rob Nick Markakis of a base hit that would have scored a run and um, I believe at the time would have tied the game and made it 2-2. Uh, uh, but that wasn't the case. Uh, Rosario made a sparkling play up the middle, quickly released, got it to Cabrera at second, turned a double play and ended the inning. And it was, it was a huge, huge moment. It was a real turning point moment for the Mets. I don't want to say for the Mets season, but we might look at it and say, boy, that was the thing that stopped the bleeding. That that play right there turned the tide. It very well could end up being the case. Um, but Familia did really well in the eighth, um, again with a little help from his defense. 
Uh, and then Mickey made another sort of questionable move, pulling Familia in favor of Gazelman. And the only reason it's a little bit questionable is the way that Gazelman and Familia both have been used in this series, or more likely haven't been used, or hadn't been used in this series. Um, but Gazelman comes in, and again, I'm thinking like, oh boy, now if Gazelman doesn't have it, well, there's no safety net here. Um, I didn't have to worry about it, because Elman retired the side in order, and the Mets got a much-needed victory to remain above 500. They have yet to be under 500 this season, despite being well under 500 since their 11-1 start. But on the whole, for the season, they are 27-26. and 26. They're a game over, and tonight they welcome in the Chicago Cubs, who, as I think we all expected, um, are starting to turn it on. And the Cubs are starting to really hit the ball, and um, they're they're uh, they're not pitching quite as well as uh, as I think we might have uh, or, uh, they they might have hoped or they might have wanted, but um, you know neither of the Mets. So, uh, but the Mets do start a four game set with the Cubs. Following that, they have an off day, a much needed off day. Um, Tuesday off, two games with Baltimore. Thursday off. And then, uh, or Monday off, sorry. Monday off, two games in Baltimore. Thursday off, and then the Yankees come into City Field. And I just hope that between now and then, the Mets get healthier. Um, the Mets have Todd Frazier back, and the Mets have Yoannis Cespedes back. Because if, if they don't, I just fear that this is going to be a complete drubbing by the Yankees over the Mets. Uh, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Four-game set with the Cubs starts tonight. Um... Drew Blank. Oh, Seth Lugo is pitching, of course, tonight. Seth Lugo out of the bullpen roll into the starting rotation. He's going to be limited with the number of innings he pitch, uh, pitches. So hopefully there are some rested arms in the bullpen. Maybe Paul Seawald can come out and get, get some length after Lugo goes three, maybe four innings. I don't know what he's going to be able to get to tonight. But I just hope that Lugo is able to get through the first couple of innings before, this, before the bullpen has to come in and, and get the rest of the outs needed. Um, DeGrom pitches on Saturday, I believe, and then Sunday, Stephen Matz is scheduled to start, and despite the scare the other day um, with his finger, he it looks like he's going to be making his next start as scheduled, so that's a relief. He will miss the DL. Um, you know, yesterday I didn't talk about it, but Syndergaard going on the DL in the afternoon, I didn't really spend a lot of time talking about it, but Syndergaard going on the disabled list um, was, was really tough um, because... You know, he and DeGrom are really the the one and two punch for this team. And despite the team's record when those guys start, it should be better, but it's not. Um, the, the Mets really desperately need both of them in the rotation for the season if they plan to contend this year. They're, they're not going to contend without DeGrom and Syndergaard. Uh, I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get by without, without one of them. Um, they're both going to need to be there. They're both going to need to make 30 starts, and the Mets are going to have to perform better out of the bullpen uh, after these guys come out of the game. So uh, let's get excited for this uh, homestand. Hopefully the Mets can improve on their not-so-great home record, which I believe is under 500 right now. Um, it, the change for that starts tonight. Yes, I'm feeling more positive. I feel like the, the corner has been turned. Uh, I'm sure they'll prove me wrong tonight, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going into the game with a, with a positive attitude. I think there. I think last night's game, last night's win, was a much needed slide stopper. The way they won, and I think we're going to see that continue tonight. So uh, let's get excited for the game. If uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do that at Mister Underscore Met. Um, I'm looking forward to interacting with you there. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, I do appreciate it. And because we've righted the ship, I'll say it with a little more gusto today. Let's go Mets.